Hey guys, it's Mikey's Mind here, back again with another book review slash sort of discussion. Um, I've been reading this, uh, Peter Ackroyd's The English Ghost, an absolutely superb book. Um, it's sort of a, a history of, of English ghost stories. It's the, the ghost story tradition through sort of four or five different centuries, um, kind of non-fiction. Um, but being that each sort of ghost story is told with so much colour and sort of imagination and, and, and detail, it feels as though um, it's kind of a mixture of non-fiction slash fiction. I've really, really enjoyed it. I love my ghost stories. I love sort of uh, paranormal encounters. I love I love um, the unexplained. And this has been a really nice um, read, actually, because each sort of story is so short and sweet that it's just really quick sort of satisfaction. It's it's a quick, short, sharp shock. It makes you think, it makes you wonder, but it's never too long before you're bang on to the sort of next story. So yeah, if you're looking for a collection of, of sort of horror, a collection of ghost stories with a, you know, rooted in sort of uh, reality as far as perhaps ghost stories can be reality, um, this is the book for you. It's absolutely superb. Ackroyd is, is you know, he's more of a sort of historian. I've, I've read some other things by him and he writes so well. It's so succinct and he researches he researches his, his work so so well so it's extremely layered as i said and you know it spans centuries uh, traditions of ghost stories uh, you've got everything from sort of uh, everything you can imagine in terms of the paranormal essentially um, it's all broken up into different sections so we have uh, the phantom in the house the first section of ghost stories about a dozen ghost stories is the phantom in the house uh, you've got the wandering ghost clerical souls, animal spirits, and moving things dealing with poltergeists, uh, farewell, and then the living and the dead. So it's broken up into these sort of different subsections. Um, and it allows him to sort of organize his tales. It allows you to sort of enjoy a certain type of ghost story, uh, you know, across anything between four or five, perhaps 12 stories. Some are sort of four or five pages long, 20 pages long, some are a page long. And so, you know, I've said it before on this channel, I enjoy that kind of short story at times. I enjoy mixing up the, the sort of lengths of the books that I'm reading and the type of books that I'm reading. And so there's a few things I'd like to sort of, uh, I'd like to sort of break the idea of ghosts down into a few different sort of um, lines of thinking, basically. So number one would be um, sort of location. Uh, a lot of these um, stories take place in abbeys and churches and cathedrals and inns and pubs and old sort of, uh, you know, antiquated homes. And I just love the idea of this, this um, sort of something left over from, from, from ancestors, something left over from centuries past. And so when it comes to ghosts, location fascinates me. Number two, I'd like to look at accounts. And I think what I love is, is um, sort of corroborated accounts, um, identical accounts. You might have different people staying at the same pub reporting the same um, occurrence, the same, uh, the same kind of um, activity, the exact same noise, or somebody dressed in the exact same clothes, or a child that has, you know, a, a child spirit that's described in the exact same way. Uh, things being moved or, or placed in the exact same locations. I think that's brilliant because uh, as much as there's an opportunity for someone to do their research or jump on a bandwagon with a certain story, uh, you know, if you if you live in a town in England, a village, whatever it might be, everyone will be able to tell you the same story, the same um, sighting. But if it was something like a hotel where you had people from afar, you know, visiting and they have the same experience, fascinating. Number three, denial. Um, there are a number of people in this book that uh, are so quick to deny what they've seen and can't believe their eyes. No, it can't have been. I must have had it wrong. It, it, it's, it's not that. It's a trick of the eye. It's it must be something I ate, it must be something I, I've imagined. I love that denial because it just, it hints towards fear and, and I love that. And from denial, I'd like to look at acceptance. I love, there are people here who, um, you know, are forced to accept what they see. Uh, they, it happens so often or so clearly or in, you know, among other witnesses, in the company of other people, they are forced to accept what they've seen. And whether hauntings are sort of real or not real, imagined or folklore or whatever it might be, I'd just love to think why. If, if, it, if ghosts are simply a figment of the imagination or part of the oral tradition or uh, a tourist trap, whatever it might be, why? Why are we so obsessed with, with hauntings? Why are we so obsessed with life after death? I guess it's just the unexplained. It's something none of us can absolutely pin down. None of us can say. There are people that have had near-death experiences that, that can perhaps offer, offer insight, but again, we don't know. And I think that's it. It comes down to mystery. It comes down to sort of um, uh, uh, curiosity. Um, and it comes down to just that human 
desire to 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 know more and to understand more and to and to be completely secure in what you know and what you understand. So guys, hit me up in the comments um, if you have anything more to offer. Um, if you're looking for a collection of, of, of uh, you know, first-hand accounts, non-fiction sort of ghost stories, this is a superb collection of ghost stories. I really enjoyed it. And uh, it's perfect for this time of year in the run-up to the Hall into, into Halloween. Um, if you have any other collections of ghost stories that you can recommend or um, particular sort of um, stories that you know of that you can share in the comments, I'd love to hear that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you soon. Take care.